in a lot of my tutorials, I get comments about which IDE I'm using or which code editor I'm using. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly that. Plus, I'm going to show you all of the options I have to optimize my workflow. In case you are curious, you can copy those as well. But to get started, I want to specify that I'm using PyCharm, the community edition. It's 100% free and you can download it directly from the JetBrains website. I prefer to use PyCharm over Visual Studio Code because I personally think it's easier and faster for my use case. But at the end of the day, you should try both Visual Studio Code and PyCharm or even your text editor on your computer. These are just tools that make your life easier depending on what you are creating. And next, the biggest confusion in the comment section is, are you sure you're not using Visual Studio Code? Because this layout here or this theme really looks like Visual Studio Code. So a lot of people in the comment section keep on responding to others, ah, he's using Visual Studio Code. That is not the case. I'm still using PyCharm for everything I code, but if you go to the settings, and you go to appearance and behavior, or actually open up this tab, you will see that PyCharm has a new, new UI section. And it's still in beta, but I absolutely love it. So just click on enable new UI, and you're going to get this new UI feeling. And I use the new UI in combination with the dark theme, the default dark theme. And that's going to give you this layout here, which is quite minimalistic or as a lot of people are saying, it's just the Visual Studio Code theme, with the exception of this funny blue bar in the top right-hand corner. Now, something else I really enjoy about my setup is the ability to increase and decrease the font size using a simple shortcut. I definitely recommend you bind that to some sort of key. Of course, since we are programmers from around the world, our keyboard is going to be different, so I don't have a set shortcut for you. But what I can show you is that you can go to settings, and you can go straight to the key map. And here you can type in font size. So as you can see, my shortcuts are a bit confusing and the default shortcuts don't work for everyone depending on your keyboard. There are a lot of shortcuts in PyCharm that do not work on my Italian keyboard. So I recommend changing the increase font size in all editors and decrease font size in all editors because it does become quite useful to increase and decrease the font size depending on your use case. Maybe you're writing a short line of code. I like to have a large screen for that. And if you're coding late and your eyes start getting tired, in some cases, it might really be a good idea to have a larger font size so you don't ruin your eyesight squinting so hard. And something else I use all the time is the shortcut for run. And actually, I forgot what they call that. Um, I guess it's this one here, run debug, or actually it's just the one here that says run. I decided to bind that to command R and that can be different on your keyboard, but that's just a key I really like to use to run my Python code because in my head, I will always remember that as command refresh. And for some reason, refresh just defaults to run in my head. So that's something I use all the time. So each time I want to run something, first, of course, I need to select the class I want to run or the file I want to run. But after that, it's smooth sailing. I can just type command and R and I can tap that as many times as I want. And it's very fast, so it runs the code immediately. Next, there's something I get a lot of hate for because a lot of people don't like change or anything new. What I'm talking about now are ligatures and you can notice that when I type in 10 is more than or equal to 10. As you can see here, we have a ligature because it's a symbol that has been combined or simplified just for a visual aspect. Now, if you copy this and paste this anywhere on the internet into any other file, it's going to be converted back to the normal or the original version. And this only works in fonts that support ligatures. And I mean, they can get really funky. You can type in print 10 is equal to 10. And you'll notice that it will combine the equal signs. Some people are saying, ah, what if you mistake that for an equals? Well, you're going to get an error immediately when you run the code. And I'm almost confident that 100% of the time, the code editor will say, hey, you're an idiot. What are you doing here? So it's not a problem for me because I read code like pseudocode. I personally recommend you never get stuck on the physical features of a language because that's just going to limit you when you want to work with other languages. But otherwise, it's fun that you can do stuff such as triple equals. That doesn't exist in 
Python, unfortunately, but if you were using Java or something, you would have this really crazy symbol, which is just a triple equal symbol. And for coders like me who code a lot, sometimes you get bored. So ligatures kind of spice up my life. And that's pretty much the only reason I use them. But if you want to enable ligatures in PyCharm, you're going to have to go to settings and you want to go to editor and inside editor, there should be a section that says font and in font you'll have enable ligatures. And you can actually notice down here all the symbols that will be converted. If I disable this or re-enable it, they're going to change accordingly. And it has to be a font that is compatible once again. Now, another question I get a lot are which plugins do I use? I personally don't really use plugins. I was playing around with the AI, which really kind of slowed down my coding process in the end because it's still very immature, let's say. But I was playing around with tab nine and uh, Copilot, but it really set me back when I was trying to do things. So I don't think it's the moment for me to use those kind of plugins. But on the other hand, I have uh, other plugins such as CSV editor, which just makes it easy to update CSV in PyCharm. So that's kind of nice. Otherwise a PDF viewer. And the most important one is the Pokemon trainer progress bar, because every time you wait for something to happen, you need to look at the progress bar and I love Pokemon. So I just have that there. And finally, there's actually one more feature I want to show you in PyCharm that I actually use. And I think it's quite neat. And this one you will find under the tool section. So in tools, go to actions on save and tap on reformat code. And what this does practically is uh, first, let me zoom out a bit. If you have some very ugly code for some reason, and I mean, there are some weird spaces everywhere like that, and you run the code, it's going to automatically reformat that as soon as the project saves. So you don't always have to select everything and reformat it, which for a lot of people might be a second habit. But for me, I just like running the program and having it format itself. And it will also format your code nicely if you are away from the screen for more than 15 seconds or at any moment that save is triggered. And you can actually learn more about that in the settings if you go to actions on save you can tap on configure auto save options, I believe. And you're going to have some more options here regarding that, such as save files if the IDE is idle for 15 seconds. So if that triggers, then your code will be formatted and you don't really have to think about that. So now I can do whatever I want. I can add the class really far away. And as soon as I run the code, it's going to be put back together. I don't really care how I code anymore as long as it works and gets formatted nicely in the end. But yeah, that's actually all I use in PyCharm and it's quite simple. It's not really anything super cool or super sophisticated, but it keeps my workflow convenient, let's say. But anyways, guys, do let me know in the comment section below if you have any other questions or any recommendations for improving this or just any cool tips and tricks you have with PyCharm or Visual Studio Code or whatever you want. You can throw your thoughts in the comment section. I love to read that stuff. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.